the text this morning is coming from Sirach. And I know for Protestants, that is a little different, but the liturgical calendar put this in this week. And I thought it was definitely a curveball. I like curveballs. Sirach 35, 12 through 17. For he is a God of justice who knows no favorites, though not unduly partial toward the weak. Yet he hears the cries of the oppressed. He is not deaf to the well of the orphan, nor the widow when she pours out her complaint. Do not the tears that stream down her cheek cry out against him that causes them to fall. He who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest until it reaches it, its goal. That is the word of God for the people of God. Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of hosts. Kadosh, 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 Adonai, Sabaoth. Kadosh, 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 Adonai, Sabaoth. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. El, El, Elyon, most high God, we indeed ask. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, heavenly dove. Yes, with all of your life-giving power, we do pray. Touch everyone, revive everyone, and renew us for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. The God of justice, the God of justice, something we know, but we don't peer in and see the fullness of what all of this means, the God of justice. Yeshua bin Sirach assist us in that. Sirach is the name of a, a Jewish rabbi. And the liturgical calendar threw that curveball by bringing in a text from the Apocrypha Dura canonical. And that means they were not in captivity when this was written. And it is considered to be in one of the wisdom books. And as the best Salem family knows, the Jewish sacred text is in three parts. So you have the Torah, the law, you have the Ketuvim, the writings, the Naviim, the prophets. So within the writings, are the wisdom books. And this is a wisdom book. And he is believed, Yeshua ben Sorak, is believed to have written Ecclesiastes. Isn't that interesting? One of the writings that I was looking at, because this took a different type of research, because as Protestants, we've removed the Apocrypha from our text. But isn't it interesting that even our theologians for this time of year brought this sacred text to us, and I believe for very rich, rich reasons. So he is generally one of the earliest witnesses to a canon of the books of the prophets. So this gentleman or rabbi, might I say, I don't want to be disrespectful, probably very well had a hand in shaping what we know as the Tanakh. And see the Jewish people who we understand that we utilize their text, they do not call their sacred text the Bible. They call it the Tanakh that is in three parts. And Yeshua ben Sirach was a part of forming what they consider and what we know as Jewish canonized text. The God of justice. Think about that for a moment the God of justice. We've known far too long in America and around the word, world, the God of injustice. And I love that he utilizes the sacred name that I utilize the most, especially in prayer, El Elyon, the most high. 
I always think as uh, some of my rabbi teachers said, it removes any doubt as to who you are speaking to. Now this fervent prayer for decisive action, see the Jewish people are wanting action on God's part, looks back on the Exodus and forward to the messianic era. Now what's interesting is this book was maybe right before or right after the ascension of Yeshua. I found so many dates, I didn't want to give you a clear date. So I know this is a different type of sermon, but I think this is where the liturgical calendar wants us to go, wants us to be in a, a mind that is a godly mind, thinking about godly things, and especially the God of justice, not the God of injustice, but the God of justice. So he notices disparity between the assurances just articulated and the dire circumstances of the Jews. Just like God recognizes the dire circumstances of the Ukrainian people, the Russian people, the American people, the English people, the Somalian people. This is a text where the people are going to those who are supposed to be servants and called out before God to say, wait a minute, God, we still have promises that have not come forward. And they've endured a lot at this part. You've had uh, Alexander the Greek coming through. They, they got out of Babylon. All of these things, just the harshness of life itself and resting in their mind is the restoration of them as a country. It is so important for us to remember who we are does not rest always on our location in this realm. As my colleague and good friend Angela always has at the end of her email, I was not born in Africa, but Africa was born in me. The Jewish people came to a point where they understood the Hashem. That's the uh, name that we do not speak. El El Elyon wanted them to recognize who they were as a people, no matter how disjointed, was the very thing that caused them to be interconnected and the linking of their destinies. Sometimes we don't see our destinies linked as Christians. We don't. We see the linkage through denomination. We see the linkage through uh, heritage of, of long-term membership and things like that. But this is about the inheritance and the heritage that flows directly from the Most High God and brings into the connectivity of who we are as believers. Everything has tried to sever that. Everything has tried to sever who we are together from your commercials that you get that now are demonizing, once again, black men or demonizing black women and showing all type of things. As people, we have to understand that we are interconnected. Our destinies are linked through the most high God. Let nothing tear asunder God's intent toward us. The Jewish people had to be reminded of this. And just not only reminded, but reminded of the God of justice. See, when you've had really hard, difficult times, the God of justice was, was there. See, sometimes you think the God of justice may walk over there and stand while you suffer injustices. No, the sovereignty of all of who God is, is always present in your situation, whether you feel God or not. Feel me? Whether you feel God or not, you feel like you're being wrong, you may well be. But the God of justice, majors in all the wisdom and glory of who the God of justice is, and this God of justice does not have on blindfolds, is trying to press out of you something sometimes you don't even recognize that is in you. It could be selfishness. It could be seeking self-glory. Because see, you, you're trying to get to the promise. And it may also be to strengthen your faith. God had me tell you over two weeks ago, the promise sees how much faith you have. And we can go grab onto a, a great promise from the Lord and hold on to it and do nothing to, to strengthen our faith. Do nothing. And then we wonder why the promise hasn't come. I love in this text as well, which it did get cut off when I sent it to Paul, I had cut off some of the text. And I'm gonna read it all to you uh, a little later in the sermon. I love that in this text, it talks about God having no favorites. 
And just this week, I was disappointed that someone put up favor ain't fair. Favor is fair. God's favor is fair. It's one of the ugliest things Christians say to each other when God has done something mighty in your life. And people say, whoa, how did that happen? Well, favor ain't fair. And then we wonder why the God of justice comes through and begins to press all that arrogance and, and self-righteousness out of us. The God of justice doesn't have time for your self-righteousness. The God of justice doesn't have time for everybody to make you feel good about what you want and what you think. The God of justice is just that, the God of justice. The one other thing I want to say to you is this text when I go through my, uh, my sacred text software, everything was in Greek. So that gives you a shaping of the time that's coming through. It talked about one of the Antiochuses uh, being uh, in leadership at that time. I say to you, favor is fair. And this is about the people coming with passion about the things that have not changed in their lives. And I have a respect for the things that haven't changed since Miss Carolyn or Miss Virginia, Miss Matt, all of you did the marching. You were alive during the time of Martin Luther King. All of the promises have not come. They have not. And we see that there's still a fight for it. What I'm here to tell you this morning from El El Elyon is, guess what? Just like our ancestors didn't always see all of the blessing, they did see the blessing. You have to see it in the inner being and know and understand the manifesting of it is for the profit of the believers, not just you. That's a hard one, I know. That's a hard one to swallow because generally we pray for what we want and we want it. We are not saying, well, my great, great grandchildren will be blessed. But if you reconnect to who you are, that's exactly what we did. We didn't pray for the right now and the right how. We pray, God Almighty, those promises that are there, live or die. They will breathe in one of my ancestors. They will understand what the God of justice is as they go through this space and time. It will breathe into you all of who the God of justice is. After all, these prophets prayed and prayed and begged God to be able to see the Messiah, to walk alongside the Messiah. And guess what? They had to meet him on the Mount of Transfiguration. The God of justice. Not the God of injustice. The God of injustice will perfume it up, slap it up, and make you think it's righteousness, and it is not zikkanu. It is not righteousness. The righteousness of God is the God of justice. Without the God of justice, sometimes when your hand has been stained and you're not thinking that, you know, wait a minute, God, you know, am I in your timing? Am I out of your timing? Am I moving and flowing? What you have to do is catch the spirit, just catch the spirit. And God might take you on that journey. You may hear the whisperings of God and you may see that afar off the blessing is for Maya. The blessing is for uh, Michael. The blessing is for B'nai. Or you will see that sometimes the blessings of your prayers and the promises far exceed who you are in space and time. The God of justice. I call the favor that has been on the, the peculiar people in this country is powerful. You think about the persecution, black people were persecuted, the indigenous people. Have you ever considered that the Mennonite people were persecuted as well? The Amish people? The God of justice, the God of justice does not mean for us to conform to anything, anything but God. And that's what is happening to the Jewish people. They don't know if they conform to the Romans. They don't know if they conform to Hellenistic ways. They're trying to feel, well, where are the promises of God that God will restore us after we're past the 70 years coming out of captivity, where is the restoration? See, sometimes how God restores doesn't look the way this realm makes you think it should look. 
The spiritual restoration is more important than what we see because all that we see will pass away. The spiritual things are what remain. Just like we live and we move and we walk in that spiritual power of Miss Ella May, who prayed for Miss Carolyn and her grandbabies. The power that I know I still walk in the prayers of Tom and, and Becky and Miss Brown. I don't take that lightly. The God of justice is awakening me for me to realize that it may not be for everything for me to do. It may be for the next generation to see some things through. And guess what? We want to see it through. I will see it with my spirit's eye. I will not be dejected in the spirit, but yet the physical, the physical must come to understand that El El Elyon, the most high God, El Roy, the God who sees us, is the God of justice. And justice is exactly the way God wants it to be, whether we like it, accept it, or not. In this realm, justice would be for my grandmother to be here, for my grandfather to be here, for my dad to be here. But the God of justice said, so you're living off their prayers right now. You're living off of their finished work. You're living off of them even before the throne room said, help her, God. Help her, God. They call her the crazy pastor. Help her, God. God is like, okay, let her be. I don't want her to be like any other pastor. God doesn't want Beth Salem to parrot everything that goes around us, but to dare to stand up in the God of justice and lift the voice of liberty for the orphans, for the oppressed, for the marginalized. We are to be that voice. Church, stop doing that. Best Salem, that's your call. And God is saying, you don't need a thousand people to do it. As we move on to the next slide, Kim. The God of justice. This has been, I haven't slept, but maybe two hours. The God of justice. The God of justice is not like the justice system in this realm that will turn around and demonize people. See, God will delegate authority. And guess what? God takes responsibility for every bit of that authority God has put in you. You have the authority of an elder, act like it. Don't backbite anybody. Don't talk about it. You have the authority of a deacon. Be the power of who a deacon is, not somebody else in your ear trying to sway. With, be who you are because God has delegated that authority to you and not just any God, El El Elyon. Through the power of all of who we are in Christ Jesus, God has given you authority. The God of justice has put into you power and authority. Say that to yourself. God has put in you power and authority. And so for some people, they may have the anointing of a smile. I know Patty Kaufman does because she can smile and light up the room. The God of justice. You are the people of the God of justice. When people see you, they should think, oh my God, here comes the God of justice. Here comes someone that's part of El El Elyon. Here comes someone who knows what it is to walk in Yeshua, live and move and have their being in Yeshua. Faithful, full of the justice of God. Not the trickery that sometimes we have. I wouldn't dare trick or talk anybody into being a believer. That's not my job. It's not your job. But I will tell you about the goodness of God. I'll tell you about the justice of God, the mercy of God. The Holy Spirit has not finished her work in this earth. The God of justice awakened in you this day. That heart and mind of power that is yours. And understand that God has delegated to you authority. But then guess what? God is responsible for that authority that's in you. So sometimes when you feel like you want to shake yourself one way and God says, oh, no, you can't go that. That's the God being responsible for the authority God has put in you. If you look back over your life, if you sit and you look at some people that 15 years ago, they were totally different people. Let them be who the God of justice has formed them to be. Don't run them back to high school and say, 
girl. You know how you were in high school or a brother. Don't do that. The God of justice is speaking through those people to let you know that transformation is real. The power of God is real. Then what's important, exercise every last bit, bit of God's justice that's in you. By being kind, many times to those who will, you will never see again, they don't have anything to give you, they, they can't do anything for you, but that God justice rises up in you. And you understand that your God is a God who sees. Oh, bless your name, Lord. And then you realize the God who sees has all behind him, all your ancestors, all the Jewish prophets and everyone, and they're all watching each and every one of us. Martin Luther King is looking over all those promises that God put through him as a prophet. Mm. And he wants us to wake up to the God of justice, not just through marching and speaking, but presence. We should walk in and God justice presence shows up in the room. People start to talk different because you walked up, not because you're a preacher or an elder, but because of the presence that comes with you. Some of you, some of the most quiet people at Beth Salem they have the most presence, the most godly presence about them. You only have to look at their family, how their children are, how they were um, respected, and, were, and you understand that that God justice has always lived in them. You understand why the tears of the widow, God respects every last one of them. God respects the tears of the widow. He respects and hears the voice of the orphan. And I was one of the ones that was orphaned. And I will tell you, God, when we get there, God's gonna say, that girl talked all day. She'd be like, God, I don't like this. And God, the God of justice stood up in me that I didn't have to be what society calculated and presumed I would be, and neither do we have to be as Christians. People automatically think as Christians, we should be a certain way. Well, I'm not that kind of Christian. And I know when I was there this past week, uh, Elder uh, Gunn and Elder Demetrius and I, we picked up food because we gave everything away. A gentleman came to the door while we were there. Nice gentleman. And I walked out and said, hi. And he had a book that he wanted to give me. Now, I don't remember exactly what the cover of the book said, but every bit of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit in me, said, don't take it. Mm, Y'all stay with me this morning. And I thought, God, the God of justice was present. I'm being rude. <laughs> and I know for some of y'all, you're going to say, well, guess what? <laughs> you're rude a lot. <laughs> but I said, God, I'm being rude. And he said, well, no, this is about uh, restoring prayer in school. And God said, don't take it. And I was kind of looking like, no, no, thank you. He said, you mean you don't, as a believer, you don't want something that deals with restoring God? in schools. I was thinking to myself, you don't know the sovereign God, baby. Who told God to get out of school? The American government didn't. And I know when I was in school and they had said, you can't pray, let me be out on the field. I'd be like, oh God, help my knee. Lord, help me get this race. I was praying all the time. No one can remove God. But that gentleman, if you had seen his face and I was the God of justice was like, he needs to see another look. I don't know what all God was doing in him, but he looked mortified and almost horrified. When I say horrified, he looked like he was afraid of me. So I don't know what he was seeing because I was sitting there going, okay, God, 
You know, this is being rude. This gentleman has come to the door of Beth Salem, you know, giving us a book that he thought, God said, that is not going to help you. That has nothing to do. I have de already delegated to Paul Kaufman, to Demetrius, to Moses, to Benet, to Linda, to Patty, to Miss Matt, to Miss uh, Carolyn, to Miss Virginia, to Justine, to Grace, to Tina, to Julius. I've already delegated what I want you to have and what I want you to do. It ain't in a book. You've already got the book that every promise is in. And the gentleman just, he said it twice. You mean you don't want this book because it was something free? And I said, no. He was given the book for free. It was not for sale. But guess what? That whatever was in that book that wasn't good for Beth Salem, we wasn't up for sale either. And I walked away from that and I came back in and, and Linda and Demetrius was like, well, who was that? And I was trying to tell her, and Demetrius, he gets this little look at me. He's like, well, Pastor, you just sent him away? You just said, no. I said, well, I didn't say no. I said, no, thank you. I do, you can keep that. No, I don't want you to waste. I think I told him, I don't want you to waste your product. And the people, <laughs> he was looking at me like, okay. The God of justice, it's that simple. Sometimes the most simple thing, somebody walk up and put something in your hand, you better know the God of justice sent them to give it to you, not the God of injustice. I'm not gonna have a debate about prayer in school. I'm not gonna have a debate about favor ain't fair because the God of justice in me says, wait a minute, I'm, do you believe I'm the sovereign God or not? Do you know what is written on the tablets inside of you? The law, I put the law in you. You are the walking example of the law of the most high God. You walk around and you are the law of God, the justice of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God. You are, I'm encouraging you this morning through this, this text that the liturgical calendar formers put there for a reason. It's for us to turn that curve. Don't get into the hype of the holidays. People already have Christmas trees up. You go in the store. It's like, my God, are we getting into the hype? So they want to put you in that season. So you walk around, you know, just almost anesthetized to what's really happening in the world. We've got people in a country that is being bombed specifically to get rid of their heat because they have very cold winters. My God, we need you, the people of justice and righteousness to stand up and begin to pray, God, whatever happens, stay the hand of this country. Let these people survive, bring them warmth. I don't know how you're gonna do it, but you're gonna do it. The God of justice, this is what the God of justice looks like. God will pull you out of exile and slavery and then bring your children into a place that none of your ancestors have ever been. And then reawaken in your children the calls to fight for the next generation, the calls to lift up in prayer, those generations that will go out beyond them. No matter how it looks, the God of justice, the God of justice, the commitment about prophetic predictions. This is what the God of justice is saying. If God has said it, God will do it. The problem is it ain't gonna be in your timing. Hey, it's not good. Cause guess what? I would have thought I had this. That Some people are like, well, God, why did you wait till I was old and my knees hurt? to give me the money to buy a Corvette. And the God of justice may say, because I never meant for you to have one, they're dangerous. <laughs> the comment about prophetic predictions witnesses to the popular conviction. See, see, we have a popular conviction and that's why I had that conversation. There was a theologian, praise God, that wrote about the rapture and the original theologian that romanticized the rapture. And if you go back to my post, you will see that I put down, I was not taken. When God talks about one taken and one remain, guess what? Y'all better get it straight. They romanticize something. You want something to bump out of heaven and hit you. When it's already in you, the kingdom of God is already in you. It's in your grandbabies. It's in your children. It's in your mother. The kingdom of God. For a brief moment, Sirach abandons the universalism of the sages altogether. 
and he deals with his people as I am doing, dealing with the African descendant notion that we're waiting for something to deliver us and we recognize God's already here, honey. God's already here. God has not abandoned us. If God had abandoned us, there wouldn't be one Native American person left. There would be no Mennonite church to speak of. There would be no Amish. And there definitely wouldn't be any Black people in this country. Oh, but the God of justice has stood up in this country and around the world. So the generosity of the early sages did not extend to the fools among them. See, we are not the fools among them that sit around and say, favor ain't fair because you got a little token. It's ugly. People get a brand new car. Well, favor ain't fair. It won't be fair when you're making that payment either, baby. El El Elyon, the God of justice, could care less. Favor is fair. You know, the thing is that what we've lifted up to brag about as believers, the Jewish people at that time were just wanting to be lifted as a country and be able to be as they were before the exile, proud of their country and that they had a temple and the light of God was shining through their temple. And God was like, no, because see, y'all got messed up in the mind with all that. Think about all the thousands of years it's taken to get the Jewish people just to where they are, our brothers and sisters, and they still have much to learn. And some of what they've learned has to be unlearned. They've learned how to be good oppressors because they were oppressed. Sometimes with African descended people, we've learned to be good oppressors because we've been oppressed. There's nothing like a lesson to teach you how to do it. Mm. It is all about who you are within community. And I believe as, as Monica and I went through again, the, the survey we did in community, do you know how many elderly people, those widows, those people who may have lost their children along the way and they live alone. Do you know how many of those people we touch every month? 65% of everyone who comes to our pantry. That's those people, those that have those tears, the widow's tears. That's who God is calling you to. That's who God is telling you with the God of justice standing in you to be a blessing to, to strengthen. No, don't you ask them for anything. They come and they donate generously. Now, I can tell you, Patty or any of the others who have sat at that table, if I were to poll them, the majority of the people that give us a donation are those mothers, those senior citizens that come through and say, I'm so thankful for what you guys do. And we don't even ask for any money. And they will give us a donation. Your blessing is in your love for your community. And that you're willing to let the God of justice shine through you. It is God justice to feed the hungry. It is God justice to help the widow. It is God justice to help the orphans. It is the justice of God that lives in you, that compels you, that moves you to do such a difficult work. God, I bless your name. I bless your name. Kenny, I think we have one more slide. I bless your name. The God of justice delegated all that authority that's in you. And God is responsible for that authority that's in you too. So I wanted to read all of this. If you go through, you may not have the Apocrypha in your Bible, go Google it and read it. For he is a God of justice. Who knows no favorites, glory to God. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, Yet he hears the cries of the oppressed. He is not deaf to the wail of the orphan. That was me back in the day. One day I was one of the orphans and I cried out to God and I got my mama and my granddad. I got my aunties and my aunties. I cried out. God was not deaf to the wail of this orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. Do not the tears that stream down her cheek 
cry out against him that causes them to fall. He who serves God willingly, willingly is heard. Your petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces, yeah, the clouds, glory to God. It does not rest till it reaches its goal. I would say all oh, those little black Africans in those cotton fields, glory to God. It didn't rest until it reached its goal, nor will it withdraw till the most high responds, judges justly and affirms the right. I urge you, this was encouraging them to continue in that posture with the God of justice to stop looking at what they see and what they don't see. And what you won't see in the news and on all the commercials and all the different, you won't see the God of justice standing up through most of the people that are trying to mess with your mind. And the God of justice is telling you to protect your mind. People will teach you how to love by not loving you back. Ooh, the God of justice. You want to say, God, teach me how to love. <laughs> God teaches you through people who will not love you back. We're talking about the God of justice here. People will teach you how to forgive by not apologizing. See, see, this is God. This is our God, the God of justice, the sovereign God that turns this world upside down. People will teach you kindness by their judgment. People will teach you how to grow by remaining stagnant. Have you ever seen someone that stays in the same place and you're wondering if they're ever going to move and they're waiting on God? It's like, well, I, last time I checked, you got to put one foot in front of the other if you're walking with God, just saying. Pay attention when you're going through painful and mysterious times. This is what the God of justice is saying to us. Listen to the wisdom life is trying to teach you. That is what this rabbi is saying. Listen to the wisdom life is trying to teach you. African descended people, European people, indigenous people, Latino people, Russian people. Listen to the wisdom life is trying to teach you. Sometimes we don't want to hear it. But I'm telling you, the God of justice speaking through this text is telling you, don't regret if you spent five weeks, 10 weeks, half a year sitting and crying, missing your mate. Don't you regret it and don't you be sad about it. Why? Do not the tears that stream down her cheek cry out against them that causes it. It is that spirit that the sting has been removed. Because one day God is going to come and resurrect every husband and every wife and every child. And the sting of death has no say in it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Believers, this morning, listen to the wisdom life is trying to teach you. Therein, you will find the justice of God. If you don't listen and you look at everything in this realm, you will be dealing with the God of injustice. The one that lies to you and say justice has no, can't see, it's blinded. God's sight is very good and the God of justice sees everything, doesn't miss a thing. Why this old blind justice we have in this country, pretending to be blind, <laughs> Ooh, I'll stick with the God of justice because I listen to the wisdom life is trying to teach me. Not always, I can be hard-headed at times, but the wisdom life is trying to teach each and every one of us. El, El, Elyon, most high God, thank you for your word. Thank you for, for the liturgist and liturgical staff that brought this sacred text forward during this time. Thank you for the wisdom God that stood up in them, God of justice the power that you gave them to go so far out of the box to bring to the people an understanding of who the God of justice is and that we all would be still God in the name of Jesus and listen to the wisdom life is trying to teach each and every one of us. Amen? Amen.